Good morning, church. Good morning. A very warm welcome to all of you joining us for our LSMC Sunday service this morning. So let's just take a moment to look around, say hi, and a very warm welcome to those around sitting around us. worship today by praying the opening prayer together. Let's pray together. Mighty Mighty God, God, your your voice is like the crash of thunder. thunder. Your breath is like a whirlwind that breaks the mighty cedars as though they were twigs. Come to us, Holy One, when we have need of you, when we feel abandoned and alone. For you are alone can comfort us and lead us through the waters of grief and loss. You alone can send us the help we need to cross over to other shores and find our way home. Give us the courage of Elisha to ask for a double portion of your spirit, for we cannot go it alone. In your faithful name we pray. Amen. Let us all rise for the call to worship. We'll read this responsively. Christ says, follow me. We are almost ready. Christ says, bear fruit of the Spirit. We are waiting for the harvest. Christ says, pick up my mantle and proclaim my name. We are a little tongue-tied. Trust the one who calls you, you are ready. Together, we will we not will leave you, Lord. Lord. Lead on. on. Let us remain standing as we sing a few songs for the acts of praise.
And let us pray together. Father Lord, thank you for this time once again that each and every one of us can be gathered here to enjoy your presence and to experience your love, O oh Lord. Lord, we want to pray for those, especially those whom we know just around us who might not know of your love yet. Um, Lord, that you would soften their hearts and give them the opportunity to know you as well, Lord. Father Lord, we want to remember those who are sick as well as those who are um, dealing with any hardship or illness, Lord. We pray that you would work in their lives, that you would be a sense of hope for them as well as their healer, O oh Lord. Um, may they have uh, practical help and may we be sensitive as well to how we can extend help to those around us, O oh Lord. Um, Lord, we want to remember our country. Um, as we'll be entering state elections for multiple states, Lord. Um, Lord, we pray that uh, things would proceed smoothly, that the citizens would still um, remember the importance of attending the state elections, although it's not on the national level like before. But Lord, we pray that um, you would allow each and every one of us to realize our civic duty as well, to vote during the state elections. Lord, we pray for wisdom for the candidates um, as well as love to fill their hearts, love for the people as well as love for the country. Mm -hmm. um, Lord, once again, we thank you that we can be gathered here to worship together, to enjoy your presence and to enjoy this fellowship. In the Lord's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us all rise for the affirmation of faith. This morning, let us recite the affirmation of faith taken from UMH 883. We'll read this in unison. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. pray the offertory prayer together. You always give us the freedom to turn back, O Lord, to take an easier road. But when we have the strength to carry on and ask for a double portion of your Spirit, like Elisha before us, we find blessing upon blessing. May these gifts reflect our gratitude for your many gifts, especially your fruit of the Spirit. May these gifts lift up others in their need that they may see their own freedom to choose life. Amen. Before we go into the parish news, once again, a very warm welcome to everyone joining us today, as well as especially a warm welcome to our speaker for today, Mr. So Tian Su, as well as uh, his wife. So uh, glad to have each and every one of you joining us today. And we look forward to have you share God's with 
work with us shortly. Okay, next. On the collection of offering and pledges, um, as usual, you can give either digitally or you can also come forward. So if you would like to give uh, online or using the Do It Now QR code, you can refer to what you see on screen. And don't forget to send the bank in slip to Mr. James Tay, our church treasurer. Uh, for those who would like to give in cash, let's take a moment uh, at the, to come forward now. Okay, next on the announcements. Um, as has been announced in the past few weeks, in case you haven't heard yet, we're going to be having a revival worship night. This will be combined with Wesley Methodist Church Kapong. It's going to be held on their premises. And uh, for those of us from LSMC who would like to join this uh, next Saturday evening, uh, if you would like to carpool, Please meet here at the Kova Square car park podium at 6 o'clock. Okay, and uh, if you would like to go directly, that's also fine. Uh, we will be starting at 8 p.m. Okay, so hope to see you there next Saturday evening. Okay, that will be all the announcements for the parish news. Let us all rise for the doxology. remain standing as we sing our hymn of preparation, How Can We Name a Love from UMH 111.
The scripture lesson for today is taken from the book of 1 John, chapter 4, verses 7 to 21. Let us read this together. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and His love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in Him and He in us. He has given us of His Spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent His Son to be the Saviour of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or sister, is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God, whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this morning, we now invite Mr. So Tian Su to speak on the topic, God is love. Can you hear me? God is good. All the time. It's a quite a common expression, right? Uh, but this morning, I titled God is Love from the scripture text that we have read this morning. So before I begin, I just want to say thank you to Pastor Lucy 
and the church leadership for uh, giving me this opportunity to share God's word. Let us go to God in prayer. Make us to know your ways, O Lord. Teach us your path. Lead us in your truth and teach us for you, our God, of our salvation. And as we come to the time of the ministry of your word, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our Lord and Redeemer. In Jesus' name, Amen. God is love. Okay? Wow, I see my brother and sisters here are nodding their head. Three simple words, but very deep spiritual meaning. The late David Paulson, I don't know whether I've read some of the books by him, known to many through Christian broadcasting and author of numerous books, made this observation that no other religion in the world has ever said God is love. He says that you go and search any of those books by any other religion. There is no word that says God is love. God is love. It's also consistent with our belief in the triune God. The doctrine of the Trinity. Understanding God is love. I believe will shape, will shape the, how should I put it, for the love health of you and of me and also this congregation here called Livingstone Methodist Church. I used to wonder when I was, in a way, pastoring Sungai Bulu. I was wondering why is it that, you know, uh, people saying around in Sungai Bulu don't come to Sungai Bulu. They go to other churches. Oh, they travel so far. They go to KL, they go other. What is that missing ingredient? So I was just joking with some of the leaders. Hey, you know, what, what, why don't we put a uh, Trinity Methodist, Methodist Church Sungai Bulu and be below it we say, God is love. Wow, the sign. Uh, from afar, people can see. Right? But perhaps, it's a thought, right? God is love. So if here, Livingstone, Methodist, let me be a bit naughty. Your, your signboard here is very prominent. From far, I can see. Wow, blue color, very nice. But underneath there, you put God is love. We draw people. But first, can we as a congregation live out to that statement? God is love. Understanding God is love will shape a person's love relationship with one another, especially loving one another. Loving one another is proof, evidence of a person's love for God. This morning's scripture text, verse 78, starts with, allow me to read again. That, dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and know God. Whoever does not love, whoever does not love, does not know God because God is love. Do you know God? Do you know this God who is love? This passage is the only passage in the whole Bible to say that God is love. And it says it twice, two times. Verse 16, quote, And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. 
Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Profound statement, right? John, John does not merely say that God loves us and God is loving. He goes beyond that. He says God is love. God essentially is love. God's nature is love. You cannot think of God without love. And we ask, who is this John who wrote this epistle, 1 John? John, this John was the disciple whom Jesus loved. He followed Jesus to his trial. He was, he stood close to the cross when Jesus was crucified at Calvary. He outran Peter to the empty tomb and was the first apostle to believe in Jesus' resurrection. He was exiled to the islands of Patmos. The author of this letter, 1 John, the son of Zebedee, the is the also the author of the fourth gospel, the gospel of John, and the book, book of Revelation. Just to give a background of this first John, why did he write this epistle? He appears to be writing to a community to which he is well known, and possibly he could be one of the members of the community. Because this community has already has experienced a church split because over a doctrinal issue about the person of Jesus Christ. There were false teachers that were saying that Jesus Jesus is not fully God and fully man. They're questioning the person of Jesus. And these false teachers were enticing the, those in John's group to join them. So this false teaching was still lingering in the community that John was worshipping. So John wrote the, this letter, the epistle, to encourage these Christians. He was telling them that he's, why he wrote that is telling them that because it's very important to know and believe that Jesus is both God and man, fully God, fully man. John also encouraged just these Christians to keep their faith in Christ strong and to continue loving one another. In John's writing, in the gospel and also in the epistle, he uses three expressions to talk about God. In the gospel of John, right? You remember, he used, he says that God is spirit. When he was talking to the Samaritan woman at the well, he says this in John chapter 4, verse 24 God is spirit, and his worshiper must worship in spirit and in truth. And earlier in 1 John chapter 5, chapter 1, verse 5, he says that God is light. Quote, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. So if we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live in the truth. The word light have many meaning, connotations. Here, especially, God is like, John is like God is pure, purity. God, by his nature, is holy. In the Bible, when you read about God, we go and read about light, it's mere holiness. Darkness is a symbol of sin. So here, John, in this verse, John is saying that people are lying if they claim fellowship with God but go on living in spiritual darkness, not darkness, living in sin. One cannot live in a sinful life and simultaneously claim 
to be a Christian. Hard hitting, right? John on the Episcopal, the Word of God. God is spirit. God is light. God is love. To say God is love. God must be more than one person, right? If God was only one person by himself, because love cannot exist with one person only. Just imagine it's one person who is on a deserted island. That person cannot love. You have got to have someone else to love. Right? Bishop Admiratus Robert M. Solomon. And I invite him now to this uh, true in his book, The Trinity and the Christian Life, had this beautiful explanation. Uh, he nicely written about why scripture says God is love. Let me share his thoughts. Imagine if God is not a trinity, but a soul person. We can still understand when it is said that he is love in the sense that he loves us. We are the object of his love. But what would it have been like before we appear on the scene, before anything was created? God is eternal, right? And we say God is love. When God was alone by himself, then how can it be said that he is love? Working, right? Who would he have loved? In that case, love will not be an essential characteristic of God, but an incidental divine behavior after he created objects to love. The doctrine of the Trinity explains why even before anything was created, and God was by himself, he would still be loved. Because God has been eternally three person. God has eternally loved and continues to love. Love is an essential characteristic of God. The three person in the God hate has been loving one another from eternity and will do so for eternity. The Father loves the Son, just as the Son loves the Father. The Spirit loves the Son, just as the Father loves the Spirit. You go back and chew about what Rob M. Robert Solomon talked about. God is love and about Trinity. In this episode, to clarify the meaning of God is love. Allow me to read again verse 9 and 10. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin, for your sin and for my sin. This verse captures nicely the basic message of the gospel. It is a good news in a nutshell, right? It is the same to John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God so loved all the people in the world that he was willing to give his one and only son who gave his life so that no one would have to perish but rather will be given eternal life. 
simply by believing in him, Christ, the Son of God, Jesus is God, is God's only Son. All believers are sons and daughters of God by adoption. Do you agree? But only Jesus had this special, unique relationship to God because no one has ever seen God but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in close relation with God, relationship with the Father, has made him known. John chapter 1, verse 18. The great proof of God's love, as well as the motive for our love, is that he sent his only son, who is the way, the truth, and the life, so that we, or who received him, believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Amen? So that we could live through him and have eaten life. We have no fear of judgment because we come to him as his children. We come to him not because of we are good, because of the righteousness of Christ that is so called what we say clothes. This love, not that we love God, but that He loved us. This love relationship was initiated by God. You and I, people, have nothing to do with it. How could we? How could humankind? All people are totally dead to God, right? Dead in our trespasses and sins. God loved us even though when we were totally unworthy of his love. God loved us so much that he sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. The death of Christ here is described as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. This is something God do to make it possible for you, for people, for humankind to be forgiven. God is light and therefore he must uphold his holy law. God is love and therefore he wants to forgive and save sinners. How can God forgive sinners and still be consistent with this holy nature? Right? Sin and holy purity, it cannot mix. The answer is the cross. The cross. There, Jesus bore the punishment for sin and met the just demand of the holy law. At the cross, God reveals his love and makes it possible for men, for people, to be saved by faith in Christ alone. And as you know, Paul tells us that this love, this God's love, is also by grace. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourself, it is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. How good you say you are, there is also, always is tainted. By nature, we are all depraved. We inherited Adam's DNA. By taking care, God took care of the sin problem in humankind. God removed the barrier between him and people so that he could live, he could reside in us and we in him. The Holy Spirit resides 
in believers. Do you agree? Amen? Verse 11. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. The last part of the verse is talk about sanctification. But no one has ever seen God. Why? Because God is spirit. God is invisible. However, Jesus came into the world to reveal what God is like. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. By taking himself a human body, Jesus was able to re reveal God to us. But Jesus is no longer here on earth. Right? How then does God, who is love, reveal himself to the world, to the people around us? Just as Christ came to reveal to the world what God is like, so now, Christians, you and I, are supposed to be the visible manifestation of God on earth. God in Kowa Square. God in this area, which you call Daman Sarawat, Mutar Dama Perdamai. What is it? Kota Damansara, so sorry, I, my geography is not that good. But not only this place, right? Kota Damansara and beyond. We, right in Sumai Bulu, I used to tell the people there, the church, the gathering of people here, Call by God. In this locality, if they are his hand, his feet, his primary means to work out his purposes and beyond in the people here, to the unchurch. So that those people who are empty inside, who feel lonely, no meaning, no purpose in life. I wake up early in the morning, do the same old routine. No purpose. There is a big gog shaped vacuum in everybody. You and I, you can fill with anything, but you can never find joy or peace of satisfaction. Only God and Jesus Christ can fill that vacuum. Amen? If you feel empty, right? No meaning. Refresh, restore again your this closeness, your intimacy with God. Come to Him again every day. Read His Word. The other day, it was quite an uh, interesting topic in one of our uh, uh, so-called small group. What is the purpose of living? Those groups are all also a little bit, you know, advanced age and all that. Children has left the nest and all that. What is the purpose? Even your young people, what is the purpose of living? You ask yourself. I think lately, most of you have read some news, right? Wow, we got these people, a few couple of people have died in Mount Everest. Oh, this is one young, where's one elderly guy? I always admire the, what he wants to do. He wanted to be the first person who has a pacemaker in the heart to scale Mount Everest. Wow. To the extent of people to find meaning in life. And I was reading for another person, I think by the name of John Barrow, his purpose in life was to do some archaeological research to prove that Christ Jesus Christ, the man, actually lived that time. Wow, so great difference 
in the purpose of goal of life. What, what is your meaning? What is the purpose? Right? Is it God-centered? We, we, right? Wherever you are, I believe that God, we are to make God visible to loving each other and be loving to those who are not yet a part of the body of Christ. I think we cannot take this issue about ah, uh, you know, ah, uh, yeah, my uh, relative lah, my this guy lah doesn't know Christ yet lah, ah, uh, yeah. Then become, I think this that response is very lukewarm. We 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 perhaps we don't we don't believe in the reality of hell. Why? Right. You know, you just go and ask yourself. The great word. The great word love. Love has got four meanings. Right? One, eros for sexual passion. Two, storage for family devotion. Three, philos for friendship. Agape, the fourth one. Agape is the divine love. It was used exclusively by John in his writing to characterize God's love. This kind of love motivates God to send his son to the world to die for undeserving sinners so that we have got we can have eternal life that is life beyond the grave but if you know God as eternal God a God that we love your eternal life starts now So I was telling, coming back to the story, I was telling that, that brother or sisters, our purpose is to find God's purposes for us and to enjoy God. Are you enjoying God when you serve here? God is love. And believers are to love one another. God's example of self-giving, sacrificial love, of giving his own son, is the highest, highest model of love. One, one commentator writes this, the kind of love, agape is the truest love. Wow, truest love. Right. I'm not sure that anybody can love God, or love their people, or love their neighbor as God loved by giving His one only Son. It's the truest love. So I believe what you and I can do, right, is just to come to open ourselves to God and open ourselves to a our brother or sisters and let God work. Just surrender to God. We abide in God and have God abiding in us. To use the phrase of David Paulson. To abide, to remain. John chapter 15, verse 5 comes to mind. Right? Quote. This is the words of Jesus to his disciples. I am the wine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, apart from Jesus, you cannot do anything. They have eternal consequences. John chapter 3 in the E English Standard Version. I am the wine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you cannot do anything. You have to be in intimate relationship with God fellowship. Love, as you all know, is the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? Yeah, a pet of the fruits of the Spirit. To me, like, love. Besides the command to love one another, 
in John 4, 7 here. In, in this morning, I preached so. A sampling of the practical ways in the New Testament. Right? The New Testament has also many verses about one another. Right? It's some practical way, you know, as a start. Huh? So I used to tell those days, uh, like many other churches, you know, I used to have problems with people in the one another relationship. So I used to, I used to pray, uh, how, why is it so difficult? Then I realized that the degree of love depends on maturity. If you are more mature, your degree of love will go up. If a church, mature church, will be loving, caring one another, plenty of signs, you see that. It's signs of maturity. So I then I understand this a bit why uh, certain things what I do for certain people, I, I got complaints this and that. Signs of maturity. And we, that time, uh, yeah, because it's still young church. We are still growing in the law. It's a sign of maturity. But a sampling from the New Testament, what we can do for one another. In Romans, Apostle Paul says, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Live in harmony with one another. In the books of Hebrew, encourage one another. Spur one another towards love and good deeds. James, do not slander one another. Don't grumble against each other. Pray for each other. First Peter, love one another deeply from the heart. Live in harmony with one another. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. We can nice to offer hospitality, but after that we you know. I like the word without grumbling, right? Sometimes we do things after I so guys so much problem, blah blah blah, you know, tidy up so many things. No. I believe that 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 act of good deed, love deed is being tainted by that. Right. The second word becomes I don't know sure how you all experience, but no, sometimes we do things and blah 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 blah. Yeah. For pastors, also talking white hair or what I know, low hair. Anyway, when uh, Billy, am I over the time? Uh, no, okay. When a believer shows love towards another believer, this provides assurance, you know, alleged proof to the first believer that he or she resides in God and likewise. God, the Holy Spirit, resides in him or her. You agree with me or not? Huh. Thank you, sister, for agreeing. Yeah. Uh, why? The verse 16 says that, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love, lives in God and God in them. You go back and chew that word, you see. And we love because God first loved us. Because God first loved believers, believers ought to love him and other in return. In verse 20, John gives an illustration of false profession of love for God. Quote, whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sisters whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. True or not? Huh. Here, John was probably aiming at the false teachers who boast often of their relationship to God. They could boast, I love God can be tested by their love for other believers. If people show hate for their brothers or sisters in Christ by rejecting them or refusing to fellowship with them, 
Their love for God should be Christian. You just see, think about that. Sometimes you know, it's you, you show their affection or you no. Know, this one come la, I walk away, that sort of thing. We don't mix together. My ministry, your ministry. I'm not about this church. Uh, that's not my experience. Uh, as five five years as uh, but pastors down in Sunan. Sometimes you can tell. Uh, but then you think of like, like children, uh, all different ages, different signs of maturity. Uh, growing people. If a believer does not love his or her Christian brother and sister who are God's visible representation, how can that person possibly love the invisible God? How? It is easy to claim to love God when that love doesn't cost us more than our weekly attendance and Sunday worship. Nice to say, ah, I love God, I come Sunday. No? But uh, the real test of a person's love for God is how that person tricks the people right in front of him or her. Could be your family members, your fellow believers, right? I, 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 got, I got a relative who always... No, my, we, I come from a Christian background, real family, born again Christian. You know, and some of, uh, some of my uh, sister-in-law are not Christian. Yeah. And they, she observed, we can talk so much about, wow, God is love, blah, 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 this and that. He looks, she watches us, how we treat each other in our family. We are trying, we are still praying. She is a strong Taoist, you know, but a little mix up her religion. She says, how we treat our senior elderly mom, how the children, so-called Christians, are treating them. People watch us. Your behavior, be it in places that you socialize, places that you work, people look at you. If you wear a cross, right? It, it's a big responsibility to wear a cross. I don't know why people wear a cross. I don't know to walk off the devil, the Satan, or what. But it is a responsibility. People expect certain things when you wear a cross. You agree with me? No? Your behavior should be different. Huh? You got car hanging your crosses in your car. Right, and you park double park of people. People complain. It's a reflection of your consideration for people. Before, before I close, allow me to use this illustration from a Bible commentary. A navigator depends on a compass to help him determine the, the direction he should take, right? Compass, right? But why a compass? Because the compass shows the person directions. And why does a compass always point north? Right, a compass always point north, right? Because the compass is so constituted that it responds to the magnetic field that is part of the Earth's makeup. The compass is responsive to the nature of the Earth. All is not. So with Christian love, if the nature of God is love, and a person who knows God has been born of God will respond to God's nature. As a compass naturally points north, a believer will naturally practice love because love is the nature of God. This love will not be a false response. Well, I must do it because people are observing me. It's not that a false response. 
Oh, I don't do that because people will think this. It is a natural response because a builder's love for the brother and sister in Christ is a proof of his or her sonship and fellowship with God. You agree with me or not? Natural because the fruits, the Holy Spirit is abiding in you. It's natural. I think, I think you're worth thinking about it. Verse 21. And he has given, not only is it natural for a believer to love God's children, if they love God, it is also God's command. Verse 21. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brothers and sisters. In John chapter 13, verse 34, Jesus, before the cross, says to his disciples, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Let me just summarize what I'm say, I have said. God is love. There is no greater proof of your love for God than your love for your brother and sister in Christ. Loving one another proves that we are born of God. Our confession is true. Jesus, Son of God, died for my sin. God's Spirit, Holy Spirit, is with you, you. And, obviously, if we love one another, we love God. A question is for reflection. How does others see love in your life, love in you? In what practical ways can you be more loving? How does having an understanding of God's love help you to love those who are not easy to love? Let's go to God in prayer. Gracious God, our Father, Father, we thank you, o Lord, for your word to us, o Lord. Father God, I just pray, O Lord, for my brother and sisters here, O Lord. Christ, that, O Lord, that you work in them, Father. You draw them close to you, Father, that they will love you, Father. So that loving you, Father, you the love, Father, also will overflow to the people around them, Father God. Lord. And also, Father, for the seekers, Father, around in this community, in this church too, Father, we pray, Father God, they may touch by your love, Father, they may be filled and not be empty, Father God. Lord. And Father, we pray, O oh Lord, that love, love that will be the hallmark of this congregation, Father God, so that they can draw the unchurched, the people who are seeking, people who are lost, in this community and beyond, to come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. In this mighty name, we ask and pray. Amen. Thank you, Mr. So, for this reminder of how we can be vessels of God's love to those around us. Um, in response, let us all rise and sing the closing hymn together, The Love of God.
Go now and love one another, because love is from God. Proclaim God's salvation to every generation. Remain in Jesus Christ, and like branches of a vine, draw your life from him. And may God the vine grower tend you and make you fruitful. May Christ Jesus abide in you and give you life. And may the Holy Spirit cast out all fear and fill you with God's love. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. service for this Sunday has ended. Um, thanks for joining us today and hope to see you next Saturday evening before we see you on Sunday morning again. So hope you have a blessed Sunday and a blessed week ahead. <laughs>